Well, well, greetings, everybody. It's Mr. Aaron from the House of Aaron and the Vantage Life. That's life, leading, inheritance for everyone. It is the 18th, I mean, the 19th day of health insurance, life insurance, all insurance awareness month. So today we're talking about the dark side of insurance. So we're going to get right into it get this through and get everybody a little bit of more insight about why insurance companies do not pay. So first, let's just start from the top. Of course, they're not going to pay if you haven't paid. So uh, number one and number two kind of go together. The dark side of insurance, when you talk about why they're not paying, if you have lapsed, a lapsed policy, an overdue payment, or you missed the payment. You missed the premium payment. And so that's what it's going to come down to. If you didn't make your payments on time, they also going to record that too and say, well, your policy was in question because you didn't pay on time. You missed the payment. And missed payments is going to lead to cancellations. So if you're thinking about why insurance companies do not pay, the first two, we're talking about lapsed policy, missed premium payments. Pretty simple. Like I said, I don't want to waste any time, so I'm getting right into number three, but just like the first two, one and two, went together with one lapse policy, two missed premium payments, and of course, uh, number one was also overdue premiums. Look at number three and number four. It's talking about beneficiaries. When you're talking about beneficiaries, you're talking about who is eligible, who is not what is considered to be eligible, what is not, and you're looking at the beneficiary disputes because someone's going to come and contest and say, yes, that's my daddy and he left me this, or yes, that's my husband and he left me this. And so those disputes, if it's not clearly written out, those disputes will cause the company to end up with the money because the, they're not going to cut a check unless it's a clear a clear recipient. They want to make sure that the money goes to the right person. If you make it if you make the waters cloudy and this is, and they think it's not going to the right person, or if it's questionable of if it's going to the right person, they're not gonna pay out. And those beneficiary disputes hurt that. Just as it is if people try to go and change the irrevocable beneficiary. So you know, when people are at a certain stage in their life, they say this person is going to be there forever and ever and always and this and that, and they make them an irrevocable beneficiary to what's going on. And then when it's time to change it, it's so much red tape to change the beneficiary. And if you try to change an irrevo irrevocable uh, beneficiary, it's going to avoid some things. And they're going to be considered... That person may could be considered the correct beneficiary, but say if you want to change it to somebody else, they may be considered ineligible because of the way that it was rushed through or if you never got around to it. And or if the will says one thing and the policy says another thing, they're not going to go for it. They're not going to go for it. And so how do you mitigate those things? And so for the first two, for lapse policy, overdue premiums or missed premiums, you want to have an account set up that's going to pay those things. And also, if someone unfortunately happens to pass away, when their death benefit comes back, they need to, it should go into their account. That way it pays future policies. This is how you fund your life insurance policy accounts by it's a sad story, but this is what most people do. They are, when they pass away, the money from them goes to these accounts, and these accounts help pay for future generations. And so that's how that will work. But when you talk about the beneficiaries, when you talk about those beneficiaries, get that estate lawyer. Go get a state lawyer or a form of trust. Get that. 16 to 18 page document and make sure you spell out correctly exactly what you want. Like, do not 
do not leave anything up to imagination because you want to make sure that the beneficiary is eligible. Best case scenario, you make the beneficiary someone who is tax advantaged, like your family trust account. You make it tax advantaged. You could appoint a family trustee and a corporate trustee, so those trustees, so in your policy when it's looking at a beneficiary, if you happen to make it a trust or something like that, or a person, they will call and say, so where do we forward this to? And that account help that bank account in which pays your premiums and collects for any by death benefit is already there. And that's where you all leverage everything, whether it be for paying for houses, uh, paying for college, and, and things of that nature. So you want to set this stuff up. It brings to number five now. We look at number five. Number five, it's funny how these companies do. Because of the cause of death, they will not pay you. The cause of death, they will not pay you. So we have to keep looking at that, and it's going to be spelled out in your policy. Yes, your policy is going to be about 115 pages or more. So more than 115 pages, you have to look in there for what types of death, what cause of death will they not pay out on. They're not going to pay out for someone who, who OD. They're not going to pay out uh, for someone who is just too much tempting, like jumping out of airplanes or something like that. They're not going to do that. They're not going to pay for that. And where they say the cause of, exactly where they have the cause of death or why they're not going to pay, it's going to be somewhere hidden in those exclusions. Those exclusions, the exclusions, policy exclusions, and there's general exclusions, because every policy has them, and they're going to differ from company to company, but let's just go over some basic exclusions. They're going to say, well, if when you signed up you wasn't smoking, you can't start smoking now, because if you be if you are now classified as a tobacco user, they might find cause to cancel or have find cause not to pay. It's going to be the loophole. They're going to say, well, they were practicing this kind of behavior. So looking at the cause of death and exclusions, it's going to be in the policy. It's going to be inside your policy. I don't know if you need to go get a professional lawyer help to read it over, to look for all these things, these loopholes and shortcuts that they could take to not pay you so you don't fall in none of those categories. That way you protect your family, whether it be income protection or mortgage protection or any of those things, you take care of them by looking at the causes of death and exclusions. Just like with cause of death, they also have one. They also have some policies out there with certain companies that they have what they call the, what is that, the accidental death benefit. And so in that case, they may put a cap on it, say up to 25000 or up to 20000 or something similar to that. They want, they may have, they want to have a cap on it, but it's like, hey, uh, your benefit is now doubled because of the type of death or the type of accident you were involved in. Uh, so if you're on a commercial train like the Amtrak or a Mark train or one of those things, and it crashes and you pass away, they're going to give you double, and that's going to be written in certain policies. So you just have to look for it in your policy accidental death benefit or the death benefit rider. So accidental death rider. So you look for those things. Well, we have, what else do we have? So there are people who uh, outlive their term. So let me go back up. Number one was lapse policy or overdue pre premiums. Number two was missed premium payments. Number three was beneficiary disputes, while number four was the irrevocable beneficiary change. Number five was the cause of death. Number six was the exclusions, which want to include types of death and things of that nature to stay away from. And so this next one could be a little touchy because outliving the term, outliving your term policy is a major reason that you have that number one and number 
issue with the premiums and the laps in the policies is because people go periods of time not being protected after they finish their term. Now, depending on what company you're with, depending on who your agent is, depending on what company they signed you to, there's companies out there today that are taking those terms, all the payments you made for your term for 30 years, they are giving it back to people to roll into another account. Not so much. Well, we'll find out if they're doing, uh, doing that, but when you're talking about outlive return, they allow you to get all your premiums back and get another policy. And so that will that all those premiums for thirty years will go into another policy. Uh most people I think it says they could convert it to a whole life policy. And so you went from protecting your family with the term, uh to have mortgage protection or income protection and now you've taken all the premiums you paid for the whole time of the term to go into a whole life policy option. Or you may just say, Hey, give me a physical. I'm now thirty years older but I still wanna keep I still want to keep this insurance going the way it is. So you don't let the policy lapse. You renew the policy before that time and get this policy because uh, you just outlive the term, which we've got to turn the page to number eight, which is the other policy. Having other policies that you didn't disclose could ultimately cancel all the other policies. And so that's why when you're doing your interview with the agent, when they're filling out your app and things of that nature, you need to make sure you know where you have other insurance plans. And having those other insurance plans or not disposing or say, hey, I have some, I can't remember them right now, that's one thing. But to, if you go out your way to not to not talk about these other policies with the agent, the company's going to find a loophole. They're going to say, well, they was with that company first. So if that company pay their death benefit, they're taken care of, they're okay, we're not going to pay ours. And so you have to make sure you watch out for these other policies because that could ultimately determine that, that you're not getting paid. And you want to say the company was bad. You want to say that this or that or whoever else was at the blame. When we just have to make sure we take care of our checks and balances and make sure that we are open and honest because number, oh, we have number nine first, but 10 and 11, because talking about this other policy, it has me added. I just had to add one. I had 10 reasons why our companies don't pay, and a lot of them roll together, but we don't have a bonus one at the end thanks to uh, the other policy to jog my memory about something else. And so, number nine, we talked about it a little bit in exclusions and cause of death. So five was cause of death, six was exclusions. Number nine, talking about straight activities. You are a drilling junkie. You like to climb the rock cliffs or face of the rock cliffs and all that stuff. You like to jump out the planes and other things like that. You like to participate in those type of things that are definitely uh, dangerous or you like to participate in other activities such as uh, smoking and drinking and everything else, those activities could be a reason why they don't pay out. They're going to say, well, at the time of their death, we found this in their system, and so we feel like we don't have to pay. So you have to make sure what's in and what's not in your policy to make sure that your family not exposed. So watch your activities. So before we get into number 10, which was the last one until we just thought of a bonus one, I don't know if we want to call it bonus or number 11, but number one was lapse policy or overdue premiums of why they won't pay, uh, missed premium payments, like you missed a premium payment or you already had your account, you already had your policy canceled, but it's a window in time that you can pay everything and get cancellation taken off, but just know you're not protected if you get canceled. Your family is not protected if you get canceled. But then you also have number three is the beneficiary disputes. Number four, irrevocable beneficiary change. So you're talking about eligibility of beneficiaries that will cause uh, confusion on who gets what, what goes where, and you want to make sure that 
you have that stuff covered. You want to make sure it's clear about who is the beneficiary. Right. The cause of death was number five. Causes of death number six was exclusions. We are talking about why they won't pay because they had things excluded that you cannot do inside. Well, that you cannot do. So we had those exclusions that if it's in that policy, you're not allowed to do that and expect that you want to get benefit from it. All right. Uh, outliving your term, outliving your term, plain and simple was number seven. Having the other policy, the other policy at number eight, number nine was activities, and number 10 is the contestability period. This is the one that gets so many people. Contestability period gets so many people. They don't even know that they're paying this premium, but who knows what, what the policy says. The policy may say is if something happens to this individual, we will not pay for the next three years or the next two years. I think two years is common, but some people may have um, longer times or shorter times. There are some out there, there are some companies out there that do not have a contestability period. Which, I mean, true story. I looked through my mom's policy, come to find out I was in contestability period for two years. That's if she doesn't well, for two years. If something wants to happen within the two years of signing that, they're not. They're only going to give you back the premiums. And that happened. I hear that story more than anything else of why people are not ready to get life insurance or why they're not understanding about life insurance when the contestability period says, hey, I had this policy set up for this person. If they had it for over a year. Why am I only getting back premiums? Why I'm not eligible for death benefit? It's because that contestability period that they were in. There's ways for them to reduce how much they give you and there's ways for them to not give you anything at all. And so... You have to watch it inside your policy about contestability period. And last but not least, that bonus. So thank you for being with us this long. The bonus, that bonus is a doozy. So you're looking at the bonus, it's misrepresentation. Lying about having other policies, lying about this, lying about that. You're making up stories to try and make it sound good for whatever was going on, and they will not pay. <laughs> they will not pay if you misrepresent it inside the, inside the school, whether it was equipment for something or something like that. Uh, let's say if you are misrepresentation of, hey, I, I only had the one policy. I don't know anything else. If you intentionally left off a policy because you think it might hurt your chances of getting a new one, that's misrepresentation. You don't want to be. You don't want to misrepresent yourself. You don't want to have a misrepresentation because that will cause you to not get paid out. And they will probably send out investigators to make sure everything is all right before they pay out the money anyway. And so certain companies will have investigators show up and things of that nature. So you want to make sure that you do not misrepresent. You want to make sure that you check the contestability periods. Be mindful of the activities you participate in before you get more insurance. You might want to look into the policies you have because policies you already have in place can set a ceiling for policies for your children. And so that's a different day for a different time. Um, you have the outliving your term. You have exclusions listed. You have cause of death listed. You have beneficiary uh, eligibility. You have missed and lapsed premiums and, and overdue premiums and things of that nature. And that's the dark side of life insurance. That's the dark side of insurance. Why insurance companies will not pay out so I thank you for your time once again. Go ahead and smash the like and the share button. But I appreciate you guys.
listening. Make sure you send a text message to the text line. Uh, the four four three six nine two seven five two six. That way you can get your questions answered about all kinds of uh, insurance. So once again, I'm Mr. Aaron from the House of Aaron and Advantage Life, and this was the dark side of insurance. Thank you again, and we'll see you in the next call.